All right, so hopefully pretty quick video on constructors. Constructors are kind of hard for people to understand usually, so I have a feeling that I'm going to need to talk about it quite a bit during class, but I'll do my best to, to talk about them here. So we just covered methods and method parameters, and a constructor is just a method. However, a constructor is a special kind of method. It's one that exists even if you don't define it. So for example, you know, I'm, I'm pick, obviously I'm picking off exactly, picking up exactly where I just left off. I didn't make any changes to this since the method parameters video. Um, but you can see there's only two methods defined in my class. Again, a little trick you can use to uh, get a kind of a more tidy view of your class. Minimize, just minimize your, your methods there. So I can see there's five things on the class. Three variables, two methods. All right. However, there's actually three methods because there is a constructor. A constructor is a method that you get for free every time you have a class. So this is one of the things that I promised that I would tell you someday and now I'm going to tell you. So before I said this is kind of magical when you when you use the new keyword in combination with the name of the class and two parentheses and it will go ahead and create you an instance of that class, an instance object. Well the way it does that is by invoking a method called the constructor. And you know, if you go back here right now, you'll say, oh, I don't see a, any special method for creating objects. It's there, you just can't see it. Because if you don't write one for you, they provide you for with one that's called the default constructor, which is this right there. That's actually a method invocation. It's an invocation of the constructor. It looks a little weird, though, because it doesn't look like any of the other normal methods. Like a normal method would have the name of an object and then a dot and then the name of the method. Well, constructors are special because y you don't have an object yet. You just, you're saying you want one. You need a new object. So it, it, the, the reason the constructor is special is because the syntax has to change a little bit. You don't already have an object, so you can't invoke the method by saying object dot method name. So it kind of strays from the, the, the standard way of treating methods a little bit. That's why it's a little hard for people to understand. So the way, the way you invoke the constructor is special. You have to use the new keyword and follow it by the name of the class and the parentheses. And if you can actually define the constructor yourself by typing in public name of the class. There's your parameter list and the begin and end. And this is what the default constructor looks like. So I haven't changed anything by doing that. Everything has stayed exactly the same. Notice one thing a little weird, no return type, right? Methods have return, methods have types, variables have types, constructor doesn't have a type. That's weird too, right? Um, the reason it doesn't have a type is because the language knows when you're invoking the constructor, it's returning you an instance of that class. So I guess they, they're like, well, it's, it's kind of obvious. I, it's really not, but <laughs> maybe that's the way, that was the thinking. Oh, it's obvious with the constructor returns, so you don't need a return type. So this is how you define your constructor. You have to declare a method with no return type that has the same name as the class. I'm going to go ahead and put a comment in here. Definition of constructor. Method with the same name as the class. No, re well, I'll say, no return type. Let's put exclamation ma exclamation marks after everything. So, there's our constructor. And if you don't believe me that it's being invoked, we can put a breakpoint right there. All right. So let's go ahead and run our program back to where we were before. Hit F5. Now instead of hitting F10 and just skipping over the, the constructor, I'm going to hit F11. And notice, boom, it dove into the constructor here. So it's showing me that it actually is invoking this method during that process of object instantiation. Same thing here when I instantiate Michael. If I dive in, boom, takes me to the constructor method. So that's all fine and dandy. So there's kind of two things that I want to talk about really quick in this video. The first is, um, let's see, how do I say this? 
the first is understanding that the timing of this method being invoked, which you just saw. It's invoked every time you instantiate an object that is of the type of this class. So every time we instantiate a new person object using this um, syntax, new person, every time we, in we do that we're invoking the person constructor method. So it's going to come over here. That's the first thing I want you to understand, and that's not too bad. The second thing that you need to understand, which is a little bit more difficult, but still not too bad, is why. Why would you ever use this constructor? Why not just go back to erasing this and letting it provide the default constructor for you without writing any code? And the reason is because of all of this garbage. It's not only because of this. There are plenty of reasons to to, write it, to put code in the constructor, but this is by far the most obvious uh, use case that you will see out there. Look what I have to do every time I create a person. I'm saying, oh, create the person, set their first name, set their last name, set their age, and pretty much every time I create a person, I'm going to want to give them a first name and a last name and an age. That's annoying because now I need four lines of code every time I want to create a person. Wouldn't it be nice if I could tell the person constructor to handle all that for me? Um, and I can do that, actually, by using what we just learned, method parameters. So I could go to the constructor and I could say, you know what? Don't let people create, or sorry, don't let users create people objects or a person object without giving us their first name and their last name and their age. So by saying that, I, I'm pretty much saying I need three parameters to perform this task. Hey, you want me to create a person? Well, I need a string and a string and an integer. So I'll say string their first name, string their last name, and int their age. So by putting this parameter list here in the constructor, I'm saying you are no longer allowed to create a person object unless you specify actual values for these three variables. And over here, if I go back to the main program, now that I've changed what the constructor looks like, now that I've changed the definition of the constructor, notice all of a sudden it's angry. It's angry at my new person because it says, there is no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter, their first name. It's basically saying you're missing parameters because you can see there it says string string int. It wants a string and a string and an int. And just as I taught you in the last video, the moment you hit that first left parentheses, it's going to show you the parameters it needs. It says, give me a string. And I named my variable well, so their first name. So I'm just going to give it value of Donnie. Then comma. Now it's going to say I want another string. I say, OK, here's Santos. And then I'll do a comma. And now I want another integer value. I want another value, which is an integer this time. And this one's called their age. So I'm going to go ahead and think about this. I'm, it's going to dive into the person constructor. It's happy now because I've matched the number and the type of the parameter list. It wanted it a string and a string and an integer. I've matched that, so it's happy. So if I go back into the definition for person, well, it's taking those three values, but it's not doing anything. What do I want to do with those three values? Well, what was I trying to do in the first place? I was trying to get rid of these three lines of code and have it do it for me automatically. I wanted it to take that new object that I'm creating and set their first name and set their last name and set their age. So I'm just going to do that same exact thing in the constructor. The only difference is now I'm actually inside the object. So I'm inside this new object. This new object that I just created doesn't have any values for first name or last name and age. I'm going to use the three parameter values to give those their initial values. So I'm going to say, I'm a new object, and I want my first name to be whatever the value of that parameter was. Oops, their first name. So this is going to say, take the value of the parameter and set this object's member variable to that. Same thing for all three variables. This.lastName equals their last name this dot age oops yeah age 
equals their age. Not able to type well today. So what you can see here is that stuff that I was doing before in the main program is going to be handled by the constructor. It's going to say, oh, you're creating a person? Give me two strings and an int, and I will go ahead and set that object's member variables inside the object, which are permanent. They stick around forever. As long as the object is there, those values will be there. I will set those for you. So now I can get rid of that code and that code. And my code just got a whole lot cleaner because of my nice little constructor. Again, another uh, example of code reuse. Um, it's not just reusing code, but it's also controlling the manner in which people create objects. So now I'm doing what they call designing. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, how do I want the person to be able to use this class? Maybe I don't want to let them create uh, a person that doesn't have an, a first name and a last name and an age. And that's the perfect way of doing it right there with a, with a constructor. And uh, I guess that kind of, I think that gets the point across pretty well. Um, I will also say that, like any method, you can do what's called overloading. And overload is another version of the same method with a different parameter list. So notice I have two constructors now. This one says I need a string and a string and an integer. And this one says I don't need anything. So actually, I can come up here and say, <coughs> or below that, and I can say, Alana equals new person. And notice, remember it was angry with me before because it, it wouldn't let me create a person with without uh, meeting the requirements for the parameter list. Well, this one is okay because it's using the other version of the constructor. This one is using, um, I'll call this, constructor version one. And I'll call this one constructor version two. And um, I'll comment this up a little better before I, when I um, commit it again. But so here's the kind of empty version of the constructor, and here is the uh, three parameter version. And now I can use all three. If I, you know, if I want to have the the nice I'll do it for you version, I can use that one. Or I can still go back to using the one where I was doing everything manually. Oops. And let's see, how old are you, Lana? She is, I think, wow, 43? Jeez. Okay, so, and then, I guess Alana's got to say something now that I put her into the program. <clears throat> and now, I believe that's it. That's kind of everything I wanted to say about constructors. So a constructor can be used to also make your program a lot nicer and cleaner. And uh, that's my program. All right, uh, the last thing is, like I said at the beginning when we started it, um, you know, this is all under source control. So notice the red check mark at the top of my solution. I'm going to right click there. I'm going to say commit. So once again, I'm right clicking on the very top most uh, aspect of the solution. I'm going to say commit. Put in some comments. Added example five. And this was parameters and constructors. I'm going to go ahead and commit that. And then I'm going to sync it. And then I'm going to push it. And now if I go back to my browser, to my GitHub, to my course repository, this, notice there's a, a commit comment here that I added example 5, parameters and constructors. And inside there, I see my new, where is it? my new example 5 and I see my new code great so that's it I'm going to I'm, I'm actually gonna make sure that the comments look readable and I'll do another commit just to make sure and uh, I think that's it
that is the end of section two. So no more videos for section two. That's everything. And uh, any other questions you guys have, you know, we'll handle during class. And if, if you need more videos or maybe another um, example program, I can maybe throw that in there too. So we'll see uh, in class next time. All right, thank you.